Okay guys, in this video lesson, we're gonna talk a little bit about gases and kind of how they add into the mix of this. We actually have an entire unit on gases and gas laws and kind of how they work. Uh, but within the scope of this unit, talking about intermolecular forces, uh, we will introduce it and at least talk about it in a little bit, okay? So things we need to remember, that once we have boiled, okay, so once we have converted from a solid to a liquid and then liquid is boiled into a gas, at that point, um, the gas is now different than the liquid and solid in, in terms of what it can, can and cannot do. First of all, it can completely break free of IMF, okay? So under, under, under ideal conditions, there is no intermolecular forces holding on to it anymore. Now, that doesn't mean the IMF doesn't exist still. It does exist. It's there. But the gases have so much energy now, they literally do not feel the, the pull of the IMF anymore. They basically ignore it or it becomes negligible, okay? Next thing, gases expand, okay? So as soon as you boil something off or evaporate away, those gases expand and they completely fill their containers, which means that their size and mass really don't matter in terms of how gases work anymore, okay? Um, that being said, they will expand ultimately until they are completely filling their space. Now, that also means that if you have a container of gases, you can compress them down into a smaller space, okay? This is very different than liquids and solids. Liquids and solids cannot be compressed, but gases can be compressed down or pressurized, okay? Now, one thing that we sometimes forget about gases is gases are like liquids in the fact that they are able to flow, okay? Now, if you don't get that, just think of wind, okay? Because wind is basically a global version of gases flowing, okay? So um, you can get gases to move and flow just like liquids can uh, down pipes, through channels, through corridors, down canyons, uh, any of that kind of stuff just like a liquid would, okay? Um, we do want to make sure that we understand that gases do have some dependability on variables. So those variables are pressure, temperature, amount, and volume. So notice how it doesn't talk about mass here. It doesn't talk about what type of substance it is. It really is how much pressure is there, how hot is it, how many particles do we have, and what volume do they take up. Okay. So these four variables are really the things that dictate how gases work. Okay. Um, the nice thing about gases is we really don't care if it's nitrogen or oxygen or chlorine or carbon dioxide or what it is. Um, all gases act the same once they're in their gas state. Okay. And that's primarily because they are free of IMF. So before we always were talking about, well, is it dipole-dipole interactions or is it lone dispersion forces or what kind of forces exist? But when you start to ignore IMF, all that stuff falls away and gases now kind of work independent of those forces. All right, guys, that's it for this video.